Hello, everyone. Happy e-learning day. I'm going to go through uh, this guided practice number two, review the types with you, and then you'll get your assignment, and then that's all you have to do besides your bell ringer, just like a regular day. I know a lot of you wanted me to give you something that was shorter, but since we have our test over this next week and it's fairly new, I want to make sure that we understand it completely so we can do well on our test like we usually do, right? Go ahead, Okay. Uh, the first section says review pun and idiom. A pun is a form of wordplay that uses multiple meanings of a word or phrase for a humorous effect. And this is what we did today in class. Um, so this shouldn't be too difficult. An example would be the population of Ireland is always Dublin. Dublin is the word that's got the double meaning, which makes it funny because a city in Ireland is called Dublin, um, but they also mean doubling in size. Then we have an idiom. It's a common saying that is not meant to be taken literally. I have put a list of idioms under helpful materials and then figurative language. That way, if there's um, a sentence that you read and you think that you found an idiom, but you're not quite sure, you can look at that list and it'll tell you what it means and it'll let you know if it is an idiom or not. Now on that list, it's not every single idiom that's out there, but it's um, the most common on there. All right, let's get started. Part A, directions. In each sentence, determine whether the figurative language being used is a pun or idiom by typing pun or idiom on the red line. If it is a pun, highlight the word or words that have a double meaning. If it is an idiom, highlight the idiom in the sentence. It says, a chicken farmer's favorite car is a coupe. Now you have to ask yourself, is there something in here that is a common saying that you're used to hearing? Or do you think there could be a word in here that's got a double meaning? And the answer is that it's got a double meaning. The word coupe, coupe de ville is a type of car. But if it's a chicken farmer, chickens live in a chicken coop or stay in a chicken coop. So it is um, a sentence that's got a double meaning. So you're going to double click on the line, click it two times, one, two. And we are going to type in pun. This is a pun. Number two, I went home because I was feeling under the weather. So is there some kind of a joke or word or words, the double meaning, or is there a saying in there that you've heard before that you know what it actually means or you think it means something different? What you should have noticed is feeling under the weather. What does it mean if you're feeling under the weather? It means that you don't feel very well. Sorry, you'll hear my dog every now and then at my house. Feeling under the weather means that you're not feeling very well. So that would be considered an idiom. It's a common saying people use to let them know, hey, I don't feel very well. And, and it's in purple. Uh, number three, we were in a pickle when we couldn't find a fourth player. What in this sentence do you think is our figurative language? What word or words in here should we be highlighting? And we should be highlighting in a pickle. Does in a pickle mean something other than in a pickle? Like is everyone inside of a pickle? Or does it mean something else? Or is it one word that has two meanings? Does pickle have two meanings or in a pickle have two meanings? I would say it does not have two meanings. It is not a pun, it's an idiom. And what do you think that means? If you're in a pickle, it says, we were in a pickle when we couldn't find a fourth player really means they were kind of in a tough situation or bad situation, kind of in a jam, which I guess is kind of like another idiom. Number four, my mom said that it's pointless to write with a broken pencil. My mom said that it's pointless to write with a broken pencil. I'm going to give you a clue. Badoom -sh. Pointless. Pointless is the word that has a double meaning. And if you're sitting there scratching your head like, wait, what? If your pencil is broken, just the tip of your pencil is broken, that it, it does not have a point. There's no point on your pencil. It is pointless. It does not have one. Um, pointless also means there's no point in doing it. Like, why do it at all if your pencil is broken? So it does have a double meaning, and this is a pun. I hope you find it as funny as I do. <laughs> Number five, he was a really great doctor until he lost his patience. Lost his patience. Lost is patience is what we should be looking at. Now we have to ask ourselves, is this a common saying or does this have two meanings? And the answer is that it has two meanings because lost his patience makes it sound like the, the patience that the doctor had, the people 
passed away or they died. Um, but it also means that he was not being patient with people. He started getting frustrated and angry. And that's why he wasn't really a good doctor because his attitude was bad. So this has a double meaning and it is a pun. Hope everyone's with me. The next review is hyperbole and personification. Hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration. I've told you um, that inside of hyperbole is the word hyper. And I always think people who are hyper are doing too much. They're being extra. And so when I hear something that sounds extra, like the example, the food was so spicy, my mouth caught on fire. All right, you're, you're being extra. Your mouth did not catch on fire. Um, you're just exaggerating to show or explain how spicy it was in your opinion. And then we have personification. And this one also is helpful that it has the word person in it because it gives you a clue. It's giving something that is not a person, such as an object or an idea or even an animal, human or person qualities when it can't usually do those things. So in the example, it says the snow swaddled the earth. Snow can't swaddle something. Snow is, an, is a thing, but a person can swaddle their baby. So that is giving an example of personification. It says in each sentence, determine whether the figurative language being used is a hyperbole or personification by typing HYP as an abbreviation for hyperbole or PER as an abbreviation for personification. If it is a hyperbole, highlight the exaggeration in green. If it is a, um, if it is personification, highlight the object or idea being personified along with its human trait. So the object, just like we did uh, today, would be teal and the uh, human trait or action would be in yellow. It says the rain seemed to skip merrily along the pond. Is this an exaggeration or is there a thing being given human qualities when it's not a human? And the truth is that it is an example of personification. So I'm going to type in P-E-R-P-E-R. -P -E -R. And what thing is being personified? The thing that's being personified is rain. And what human or person quality is being given to the rain? And the answer is skip. Rain can't skip, but a human can, or a person can. Number two, the hurtful words slapped me in the face. Now, I know this sounds like an exaggeration, but really, um, words can't slap you, but a person can. So this is personification, P-E-R again. So what is being personified? And the answer is words. And what person quality was given to the words? And the answer is slapped. Words cannot slap you, but a person can. They're just saying that for effect. Number three, his new tennis shoes are so bright that I might go blind. So the only things that are in here are tennis shoes. Are tennis shoes being given a human quality, such as skipping or slapping? And the answer is no. So this is not personification, it is a hyperbole. So we're going to type in H-Y-P. And what part is the exaggeration? It's the part where they say, I might go blind. That's an exaggeration. And we're going to do that in green. Number four, the alarm clock by my bed kept screaming in my ear. So the thing in here is an alarm clock. Is the alarm clock being given a person quality, yes or no? And the answer is yes. So for number four, we should be typing P-E-R. Again, click on the line two times. One, two, P-E-R. So what is being personified? The answer is the alarm clock. And what person quality or human quality is being given to the alarm clock? Screaming. The alarm clock isn't actually screaming. It is loud and obnoxious, I'm sure, but it is not actually screaming in your ear. A person can do that, but not an alarm clock. Unless, however, I guess if it was um, like a radio station, but we're not going to go there. It is personification. Five, she is so fake that she is turning into plastic as we speak. So is there something being personified? Is there something in here? So what's in here? It says she. So she um, helps you assume or makes you assume that this is already a person. So if it's already a person, it actually cannot be personification. This is going to be hyperbole, H-Y-P. In which part is the exaggeration? She is so fake that she's turning into plastic as we speak. Well, you can say that she's fake, but the part where you're exaggerating is saying that she's turning into plastic as you speak. That's an exaggeration. She's not turning into plastic. Almost done. See, it's not so bad. Last one, onomatopoeia. This one should be the easiest part for you overall because an onomatopoeia, as we know, makes a sound or the word sounds like the action or animal that's 
in the sentence. So all you have to do is read each sentence and highlight the word that makes the sound in orange. Number one, Justin continued to slurp his drink until it was gone. What word in that sentence makes the sound? And the answer is slurp. So click on slurp two times, one, two, and choose orange for your highlight. Number two, the crickets chirped a lovely song all evening. What is our sound word? Chirped is our sound word. Highlight that in orange. Number three, the cat meowed when it went, when it wanted to be fed. I'm gonna read that again. The cat meowed when it wanted to be fed. What is the sound? The answer is meowed. Highlight that in orange. Number four, the race car zoomed past me as fast as it could. What is my sound? What word in here makes a sound? The answer is zoomed. So hopefully you got that. If so, awesome. And the last one, Destiny jumped into the pool with a big splash. What word in this sentence makes a sound? And the answer is splash. I know you probably got that. And now we're to the last section. We have to put it all together. Part D directions say, determine the type of figurative language being used in each sentence and type the abbreviation on the red line. So now we're going to put them all together. And the best way to prove your answer to get the answer right is to be able to prove your answer. So let's look at number one. It says, the kiddos were bouncing off the walls after they ate candy. Now be careful because simile and metaphor were now added in here. And those weren't the two that we reviewed at all because you should have already known those. So um, that just be aware that that is an option for you. So I always ask myself first, is there anything being compared? It says the kiddos are bouncing off the walls after they ate candy. Are the kids being compared to anyone using like or as or not using like or as? And the answer is no, they're not comparing anything. Is there a sound in here? Nope, there's not a sound. And they're talking about kids and those are, they're, they're people already, so it can't be personification. So we know it's not onomatopoeia, it's not personification, simile, or metaphor. So we're left with hyperbole, are they exaggerating? An idiom, a common saying that's not meant to be taken literally, or a pun. Uh, it's kind of like a joke and it has a word or two that's got a double meaning. What is the best answer? The best answer is idiom. So I'm going to write ID. And what part is the idiom in this sentence? Bouncing off the walls. What they really mean is they were going crazy. And this is actually a saying, again, idioms are common sayings that people use quite often. For idioms, we said that would be color purple. Emily was a gem when she helped me study. So I start right from the beginning like I did last time. Emily is the main topic or person or subject in this sentence. Is Emily being compared to anything? It says Emily was a gem. And the answer is yes. So it's either going to be a simile or a metaphor. With similes, they make a comparison using like or as, and a metaphor is making a comparison without using like or as. Do they use like or as to compare Emily to a gem? And the answer is no. So what kind is this? It is a metaphor. We're doing M-E-T. So with this, the best thing we can do is underline what is being compared. So we're going to click two times on Emily, one, two. Hold down the control key on your keyboard, hit U for underline. Emily's being compared to a gem, so double click on gem, one, two, control U to underline. That's how we prove our answer. I hit the tab key um, in case you wanted to put your answer farther away from the sentence. Number three, my brother runs so slowly that snails would pass him in a race. Is the brother being compared to anything? And if you're not sure, because there's, it says snail in here, are they saying the brother is like a snail? No. Or the brother is as something with a snail? No. So it's not a simile. Are they saying the brother is a snail? No. So it's not a metaphor. Are there any sounds in here? Nope. So it's not onomatopoeia. The brother is already a person, so it can't be personification. So they're either um, exaggerating something by using a hyperbole, they're using a common saying such as bouncing off the walls, or they're making a joke where there's a play on words or a double meaning. What is the answer? This is a hyperbole. This person is exaggerating. Their brother doesn't run so slowly that a snail would beat him in a race. That's an exaggeration. It's actually not very nice, but fun. What part would we have to highlight in green to show that they are 
exaggerating. And it says snails would pass him in a race. That's an exaggeration. So highlight that part in green. Number four, the cow mooed as she grazed in the pasture. Is anything being compared? Is the cow being compared to anything? And the answer is no. Is there a sound in this sentence? And the answer is yes. What is the sound in this sentence? It is mood. So we're going to double click on mood. Mood. You're welcome. And that makes it what type? Onomatopoeia. O-N-O. -O, tab. There we go. Five. She was fired from the hamburger place for putting her hair in a bun. So she is the topic of the sentence. Is she being compared to anything? Is she being compared to a hamburger or a bun? And the answer is no. They're not saying she is a bun or she's like a bun or like a hamburger or is a hamburger. So it's not similar metaphor. Are they making a sound in this sentence? And the answer is no. She is already a person, so it can't be personification. So again, we're left with hyperbole, idiom, or pun. Are they exaggerating? Is there a common saying such as bouncing off the walls? Or is there a joke in here? And the answer is it is a joke. This is a pun. I really hope you got that because it was hilarious. Which part of this made it a joke? I'm going to highlight that in red. And it says um, putting her hair in a bun because it could literally mean that and normally it's just one word. But in this situation, there's like a whole section, which we're not used to. That means that she could have, you know, put her hair up in some kind of like a messy bun, you know, crazy or whatever in a bun. Or that she actually put her hair inside of a bun. That is a joke, friends. Red. Number six. The new blanket was soft like a baby kitten. So let's start at the very beginning. Similar metaphor. Is the new blanket being compared to anything? The new blanket is being compared to a baby kitten. So then all you have to ask yourself is, is either going to be a similar metaphor, or are they using like or as to compare the blanket to a baby kitten? And the answer is yes, they are. So this is which type? Simile or metaphor? It is a simile. So we're going to type in S-I-M. And we need to talk about what is being compared. Well, first of all, we knew it was a simile because it has like. So I'm going to double click on like and highlight that in yellow to say, hey, I found you. You can't hide from me. What is being compared now? It was um, the new blanket being compared to a baby kitten. So those two things should be underlined. Remember, yours does have to look just like mine in order to get the proper points for your guided practice. So if you've not done that so far, please go back and make sure you've done that. Number seven, the wind whispered in my ear as I walked up the trail. Wind whispered. So again, start from the very beginning. Every time, is there something being compared? Is the wind being compared to anything else? And no, it's not. Then you have to ask yourself, is there something that's making a sound like buzzed or mood or hissed? Nope. Is there something be being personified? Is there a thing being made to be out to sound like a person or anything like that? And the answer is yes. So this is personification. What thing in this sentence is being personified? And the answer is wind. What human trait are they giving to the wind? Whispered. The wind cannot whisper, but a person can. So this is personification. Almost done. Number eight, my zit is so big, it could be used as a stop sign. My goodness, gross. Okay, so um, is there a comparison being made? This one's kind of tricky because you could maybe say the zit's being compared to a stop sign, but they're not saying it is a stop sign. They're not saying it's like a stop sign. So technically it is not a comparison. It is not a simile or a metaphor. Is there a sound in this sentence such as mood or buzzed or hissed? Nope. Is there personification? Are they making the zit sound like a person, like hitting, slapping, jumping? No. So we're left with hyperbole and exaggeration. An idiom, which is a common saying, such as bouncing off the walls or a cat got your tongue or break a leg. We've got pun where it's kind of a joke, like putting her hair in a bun. What is the best answer? And if you got hyperbole, you are exactly right. Nice job. I P. Which part is the exaggeration? 
it could be used as a stop sign. <laughs> that is an exaggeration. It is funny. At least they're saying it about themselves, so it's not as bad, but it's still an exaggeration. Nine, Joey hit the nail on the head when he said to be careful who you trust. So are they comparing Joey to anyone or anything? Are they saying Joey is this or Joey is like this? The answer is no. So we can automatically rule out simile and metaphor. It's not going to be that. Um, Joey is already a person, so it is not personification. Onomatopoeia, is there a sound in this sentence? Nope, no sound. So we're left with those three again. Hyperbole, idiom, or pun. Are they exaggerating a lot, like snails would pass them in a race, or it could be used as a stop sign? Are they using a common saying, such as bouncing off the walls, cat got your tongue, things like that? Or is it a pun, where it's a joke? Which one is it? And the answer is, this is an idiom. I-D. What part of this sentence was the idiom that we should be highlighting in purple? And it's hit the nail on the head, which means he was exactly right. Joy was exactly right when he said to be careful who you trust. Purple. Only three more and then we are done. And then you can do your assignment. Number 10, Adele crossed the road to say hello from the other side. Adele crossed the road to say hello from the other side. Now I'm hoping some of you got that and laughed right away because I think this is hilarious. <laughs> anyway, back up. Are they comparing Adele to anything? Are they saying Adele is this or Adele is like this? The answer is no. So it's not a simile or metaphor. Adele is already a person, so she cannot be personified. There are no sounds. So we're left with those famous three again, hyperbole, idiom, or pun. Are they exaggerating? Is this a common saying like hit the nail on the head or bouncing off the walls, or is this a joke? And because I already gave you your clue and said this was hilarious, this is a pun, my favorite. P-U-N, pun. And which part was the joke? Hello from the other side. And if you're not getting why this is a joke, that breaks my heart because this is so funny to me. You know how they do those jokes, um, why did the chicken cross the road? And a lot of people say to get to the other side. That's why that is part of the joke. But also Adele has a song where she sings it. Hello from the other side. Again, you're welcome. So this is a joke. 11, Christian's hands were like ice after his morning jog. So you have to ask yourself, are they comparing Christian's hands to anything? The answer is yes, they're comparing his hands to ice. So the last thing you have to do is say, are they using like or as? Do you see like or as in here? Yes. So which one uses like? It is a simile. So we're going to click S-I-M. We're going to highlight that like to say, hey, I found you. You're not hiding from me. And which two things are being compared? Hands, control U to underline hands, and control U to underline ice, because those are the two things being compared. Last one, he is a clown when the teacher leaves the room. Are they comparing he, whoever he is, to anything in this sentence? The answer is yes. It's nice to be able to stop right, right the first when we ask ourselves those questions, right? Instead of getting all the way to those famous three. He is a clown. They're comparing him to a clown. Then you have to ask yourself, are they using like or as or not? And they are not using like or as, so which kind is that? And the answer is a metaphor, M-E-T. Now I have to do is underline the two things being compared. So we're going to underline he and clown. He is a clown. Hopefully this helped you understand it a little bit better. Your assignment um, is assignment number two, and there are 20 questions, so get working. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll do my best to respond as soon as possible.